Well, I hope you've been saving your pennies because Zen 6 is looking really good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously. And not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9-12% to depending on when you join. So if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so the 9800X3D, it feels like it just came out and don't get me wrong, it's definitely an excellent processor. In fact, I'm running one myself, that's how good it is. But what if I told you there was a far, far better processor just on the horizon from AMD and not only would it bring far higher gaming performance, which of course is the most important, but the multi-core performance would absolutely mog all over the 9800X3D. Well, according to some leaked information, it looks like that just might be the case and I got a ton of info to go over so let's start off with some information that actually originally came from a Tom's Hardware article where they're sourcing Moore's Law is Dead as well as Chip Hell who both stated that apparently these new Zen 6 processors which will be named likely the 10800X3D and the 10950X3D which we'll talk about the 10950X3D in a future video well apparently they're gonna have potentially up to 12 core CCDs or at least you might know them as chip what this means is the gaming processor, the one that you'll mainly be buying, the 10800X3D, and that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video, could have 12 cores and 24 threads, whereas the 10950X3D, well, that one could actually have 24 cores and 48 threads, a pretty massive leap over the 8-core and 16-core variants that we currently have our hands on. And yes, that is going to translate into very, very massive multi-core gains, as well as potentially some pretty big gaming gains as the larger the core cores get, well, the more cash they can actually pack onto those cores. Now, this information was actually backed up recently by yet another leak that was shared over on Notebook Check, and this once again comes from the leaker Moore's Law is Dead, who actually did go ahead and talk about the IPC that apparently could potentially reach up to 10%, and that might not sound like a lot, but when you combine this with the leaked information of potentially 6 gigahertz boost clocks, and then you think about the extra cash these things could potentially have, well, this is going to lead to a gaming processor that's incredibly fast. How fast? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the charts that I've thrown together to figure out just that. So taking a look here at my first chart where we're going to look at the specs this thing, you can see, yes, 12 cores, 24 threads on the 10800X and 10800X 3D. And then first thing you look at the 10800X, it's likely going to have 6 gigahertz for the boost clock, a 10% IPC uplift as was leaked. And then in terms of the L3 cache, well, here's where things get actually very, very interesting. And this is what's going to lead to massive gaming performance improvements. So right now we have 32 megabytes of L3 cache on the CPUs themselves on the 9800X3D and all the way back to the 7800X3D. And then when they add the 3D cache chiplet on top, that actually brings it to a total of 96 megabytes as you get 32 from the cores and 64 from the 3D cache that's stacked on top. And that's really what leads to a massive gaming performance leap. But what if I told you that these new 12 core CCDs would not only be, well, according to leaks, but also just based on simple math, much larger, which would afford them more L3 cache. I mean, the cores themselves, because they're going to be potentially 50% larger and have 50% more cores, well, that means a total of 48 megabytes of L3 cache instead of 32. And with the physically larger die, that means that they can also physically fit more L3 cache on top as 3D cache, meaning you will get 48 plus 96 megabytes of cache, otherwise known as 144 megabytes of cache. But there's also been talk of potentially double stacking L3 cache, which could actually lead to 240 megabytes of cache. Now, I'm not going to actually spend too much time talking about 240 megabytes of cache because while it could happen and hey, AMD could definitely surprise us, I think they are going to actually go ahead and leave that for a future generation of CPUs, even though there are talks of it right now. So even 144 megabytes of cache, though, we do got to keep in mind that is going to be a very, very substantial jump over the 96 that we currently have on the 9800X3D, and there would also be potentially no 
extra latency benefit as the core is physically larger and there's more cores in general. So this shouldn't suffer from the issues that you see on other CPUs where you add more and more cache and you try and expand the die by adding more cache, which could potentially increase a latency. Well, no, the actual architecture of the die itself should remain the same while adding this more cache. So that's gonna be a huge deal, but what if I told you it gets even crazier? Because yes, according to some information that I've been seeing, well, apparently it looks like you might just maybe finally get 8,000 mega transfer DDR5 working on these CPUs without any issues. And that's gonna be a huge deal because that's also gonna improve the fabric latency, which I am suspecting you will see some pretty massive improvements to the fabric latency finally on the Zen architecture, which means the latency of the entire CPU should go way down. So more cache, lower latency, higher clock speeds, and of course, much higher clock speeds on the DDR5 memory as well. 8,000 mega transfers, potentially even higher, meaning the gaming performance of this chip, I think is gonna be really, really good for gaming. Although the 10800X 3D is gonna be the only one with 144 megabytes of cache, the 10800X is unfortunately only gonna have 48 megabytes of cache. So if you do want the most gaming performance, you'll definitely need the 10800X 3D and not the 10800X. Although I do believe the 10800X will probably be very, very popular among those who are looking to do some multi-core type of workloads and are a little bit less interested in gaming. Or maybe for the early adopters, as I do believe they'll bring out the X and not X3D processors first. But now let's talk about the actual performance. I mean, how much is this actually gonna lead to in terms of gaming as well as multi-core performance? Well, I'm glad you asked because I also threw together a chart for just that. And taking a look here at my second chart, and let's start off with the price point because let's get the bad news out of the way first. I do believe there will be a price increase. The reason for this is because, well, the dollar, well, pretty much all around the world continues to be worth less and less as more and more money is printed, inflation goes up, etc. as well as they're gonna use giving you more cores, I think as, well, somewhat of an excuse to try and raise the prices. So it's kind of a double-edged approach here. I mean, you got all kinds of increasing prices on stuff in general anyway, combined with giving you more, yeah, they're probably gonna raise the price. So with that being the case, I think the 10800X it could stay the same price, but I think it will go up about $50. And then the 10800X3D, I think that's actually gonna go up by $100. And it's easy to see why. I mean, the 9800X3D was selling out and it was actually being oversold at like $550 anyway for a while. So I don't see any reason why they wouldn't just target $550 out of the gate and drop the price as the year goes on. And of course, they are also giving you 12 cores instead of eight. Again, you know, it would be great to see that at the same $450 price point, but I think they're going to raise it to $550. And in fact, in order to make this sting less, they might even call these the 10850X and 10850X 3D and then introduce 10 core variants at maybe 399 and 499 to try and soften the blow a bit. But look, even though the pricing is going up a little bit, again, I do think there'll be cheaper versions that'll still get basically all the same gaming performance with just less cores. So definitely keep your eyes out for those and I'll talk about those in the future if you don't wanna spend more money, which of course makes a whole lot of sense. But if you want the best of the best, yes, I think their very top end models will go up in price a little bit because of the higher cores. Now, in terms of the gaming performance though, where do I expect these things to land? Well, if you do some simple math, when you take into account the clock speeds, as well as the extra cache, as well as the IPC, I do suspect you will see over a 30% improvement in gaming performance out of both of these CPUs, which is actually extremely impressive. And that's something you don't see out of many CPUs these days. And that goes for both the 10800X and the 10800X 3D. I think the 10800X will be about 32% faster than the 9700X. And then I believe the 10800X 3D will again be about 32% faster than the 9800X. 800X 3D. So these are gonna be incredibly powerful for gaming. And in multi-core, it gets even crazier, as I do believe you will see roughly an 80% improvement in multi-core performance out of both these CPUs when compared to their last generation counterparts, making them incredibly powerful for multi-core gaming. And in terms of release date, because here's where things get really spicy. Based on the release cadence of previous generation CPUs, it's very likely that these things will
will release sometime in quarter one of 2026. And in fact, I'll go as far as to say, I believe it'll be the end of quarter one, 2026, sometime in March, likely the end of March, probably March 29th, somewhere around there. However, it hasn't been officially figured out at this point in time, and it could potentially slip into quarter two of 2026 if things don't go to plan. So quarter one of 2026, most likely, but quarter two of 2026, if things don't go to plan, which means these things could be less than a year away and bring you, again, over 30% more gaming performance as well as 80% more multi-core performance if you're willing to go up in price just a little bit. And again, if you're not, keep your eyes out for eight and 10 core variants that I do believe will also be announced. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think that the 10800X and the 10800X 3D will really bring over 30% more gaming performance and over 80% more multi-core performance? Or do you think that these figures are just too high? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.